Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Dinosaur Facts. Today it seems I've finally run out of ideas, so we're going to review 10 more absolutely bonkers dinosaur theories. This time we are going to do a deep dive into some interesting ideas, outdated theories, and some real conspiracy type shit. So buckle the fuck up, and remember to hit the like and subscribe button so you don't find a Titanoboa in your toilet. Number 10. Diplodocus could break the sound barrier. The Diplodocus was a massive sauropod with a tail that measured 45 feet in length. They likely would have used this giant hunk of meat as a defense against any carnivores dumb enough to think they had a shot. There has been debate over the years about how fast they could swing their tails. For a long time, it was actually believed that these animals could crack their tails like a whip at supersonic speeds, or 760 miles per hour. Now this is usually the part where I'd make fun of that because that's a stupid survival strategy, but can you imagine walking up to this gargantuan behemoth of a creature? It flicks its tail and the crack of a thousand whips fills the air. I'd probably shit myself, and I bet you would too. Not to mention that's more than fast enough to turn you into a fine red mist. But as we've established before, paleontologists don't like to have fun. So this theory was actually disproved a few years ago. Now they say it could only swing it up to 62 miles per hour, which is some pussy shit. Still really fast and definitely would pack some oomph, but not nearly as impressive. Boo. Number 9. Fossil Fumbles over the years, paleontology has gone from a stupid little baby pseudoscience to the flourishing field of science it is today. But there were definitely a couple of bumps along the road, and unfortunately, people from the past were stupid. So let's take a quick look through some of the funniest misinterpretations of fossil findings. The plates on the back of a stegosaurus have always been confusing to science, but never in my fucking life would I have assumed they were 20 tiny wings, unlike a 1920s paleontologist. Ceratopsids have a very unique silhouette in the animal kingdom, but we don't necessarily have any reason to believe that their frills didn't attach straight to their back. Isn't it just a grotesque little freak of genetics? On a similar note, what if instead of the cool-ass shark fin vibe that the Spinosaurus had going on, it looked like a dumbass camel with teeth? But you know what else is dumb? The Parasaurolophus using its cranial cavity to make funny little music. What if instead it used it to, hmm, I don't know, spew fucking fire out of its mouth? Yes, that was a real theory, and no, it could not do that. Number 8. We don't really know how the dinosaurs died. Most sheeple believe that it was a simple asteroid that deleted the dinosaurs from the game files. But little did you know, that's exactly what Big Paleo would have your stupid little rat fuck brain believe. While yes, an asteroid is technically the most likely cause, given we found a crater dating back to 65 million years ago from an asteroid that was easily big enough to wipe life off the face of this rock, and we found a layer of asteroid dust covering the planet, with dinosaurs before it and not after. But open your eyes, brother. That's just an illusion. Real quick, I'll give you my top three favorite alternate theories, and you can decide if you want to trust me or those fucking bastards down at the Smithsonian. Lightning round. Number three. Mammals rose up and ate all the fucking eggs. It's kind of funny and you gotta love an underdog story, but I'm not really buying this one. Number two, caterpillars. What? Caterpillars. Yeah, caterpillars. A few scientists believed for a time that when caterpillars evolved, they were too cracked and ate all the food, driving first the herbivores and then the carnivores to extinction. That's funny as hell, but fuck off, that didn't happen. Number one, dinosaur farts. Another group of shithead scientists decided to calculate if the methane put out by the flatulence of large dinosaurs would have been enough to influence climate change. The answer was no, but that didn't stop other pseudo-intellectuals from continuing to claim that the dinosaurs gassed themselves to death with their own farts. Honorable mention to the sex lakes theory. Number 7. Ancient Civilizations on Earth Many of us gaze upon the stars, pondering questions such as, Are we alone in the universe? Is there intelligent life out there? Are there other civilizations out there? Well, it turns out, your dumb fucking ass is looking in the wrong place, because it's been here all along. And no, I'm not talking about us. I'm not too sure we qualify anymore. Instead of peering into deep space, you should be searching deep time. Some crack fiends with a biology degree have postulated a funny little hypothesis. What if there was an ancient civilization on Earth long ago? And no, this isn't some ancient aliens history channel bullshit. They're talking about little troglodytes crawling from the primordial ooze to create advanced technological civilizations. When you consider that multicellular life emerged on Earth a little over 600 million years ago, 
And we went from stupid cave creatures to setting foot on the moon in about 300,000 years. It might almost seem plausible. But alas, another fun and awesome scientific theory is ruined by something as trivial as no evidence whatsoever. One interesting paper proposed that the Paleocene-Eocene Thermal Maximum, PETM for short, a period about 50 million years ago when global temperatures spiked, was caused by greenhouse gas emissions from an ancient civilization. Unfortunately for this civilization, it looks like white people on Twitter weren't there to save the environment. It is definitely an interesting theory, but it does fail to take into account the fact we see no other evidence of a civilization at this time. Number 6. Homo sapiens drove other humans to extinction. Many moons ago, we were not the only humans on Earth. We shared the planet with species like the Neanderthals, who I'm sure you're familiar with, a group of humans who lived in Europe and Asia who actually had bigger brains than we do. Good thing size doesn't matter, fellas. There was the Homo erectus, which is funny, and they lived all across Africa, Asia, and Europe. And finally, there were the Hobbit people, not joking, they were called that, who grew to be about three and a half feet tall and lived on tiny islands until about 50,000 years ago. Some scientists estimate that we have lived among around eight other species of human, and we are what remains. Some scientists believe we may be at fault as well, through competition and tribal wars, a la Clash of Clans. While this does sound like a kick-ass movie idea, it's likely not the only reason they went extinct. They simply may not have evolved as well as us, a skill issue, if you will. It is very possible that they just got fucked up by the last Ice Age. Or, as many now believe, we may have literally fucked them out of the gene pool. No troll, it is a very real possibility that as a species, our pullout game was so weak, we just completely mixed all our genes together, basically combining our species. While this might make you feel dirty, appalled, existential, it really shouldn't. When species are this closely related, and many are not well understood, the line you draw where one species ends and another begins is somewhat arbitrary. So yeah, it wouldn't be that weird to fuck a cave person and that's backed by science. Number five, many dinosaurs were never fossilized. Fossilization is a tricky process that requires a lot of really specific things to go exactly right. First, something has to die, which is usually the easy part. They also have to die somewhere with soft and wet conditions, like a swamp, a beach, a body of water, or your mother's put. Next, they have to be buried really fast before things like weather and evil dinosaurs can pick apart and destroy the body. Then over a super long ass time, the pressure of the ground squeezes shit like air and water out of the body, and minerals seep in their place, turning bone into stone. So naturally, since this process requires specific circumstances, not every creature that dies turns into a little bony angel. But how many dinosaurs were never fossilized at all? If a fossil needed swampy conditions, what happened to the Prosmanglianglius of the high mountain ranges? What about the Diuplidon from the middle of the desert? So this theory is definitely true to some extent. We discover completely new dinosaurs just about every week. Who's to say that over 200 million years, there was never a dead-end branch of the dinosaur tree that lived and died deep in the Jurassic jungle, unknown to science forever? No, wait. We just found the last one. Number four, the chain of being. This list has surely gone to strange places. Some theories bordering the conspiracy. Well, this one goes headfirst into the deep end of batshit crazy. The chain of being was an old scientific theory that evolution worked towards an end goal, with all creatures evolving into the next. This would start your measly existence off as a fucking rock, as you evolve all the way up to a plant, then a fish, a rat, a monkey, until you become a human. Following this intriguing train of thought, some believe that dinosaurs would have eventually turned into something of a dinosauroid, a theoretical higher evolution of dinosaurs where they become super intelligent. Besides giving me horrific fucking nightmares as a child, these are entirely fictional, as well as the chain of being as a whole. Well, at least according to the mainstream media. Going back to the era of the last interesting scientific theories, the 1800s, it was actually common belief that dinosaurs existed on Venus. Little was known about what other planets were actually like, so they just kind of assumed it was like prehistoric Earth, I guess. Following some rigorous scientific observations and calculations, I'm sure, they figured there must be dinosaurs down there. 
Nowadays, we know better. Venus has an almost entirely carbon dioxide atmosphere, torrential downpours of sulfuric acid, and it is the hottest planet in our entire solar system. So clearly, there's no dinosaurs here. Anymore. Put on the tinfoil hats, fuckheads. A select group of thinkers believe that the gray aliens often reported during UFO sightings are actually a highly evolved version of the dinosaurs that once stomped across our own planet. Who's to say they didn't escape the planet, hang out on Venus for a while, and now live their lives probing human buttholes and abducting random meth heads? Now I can hear your skepticism through the screen, and it hurts. So before you call me stupid, number three, the Triassic Kraken. The Triassic period was home to many real life, actual fucking sea monsters. The Tanistrophius, for example, which just evolved to look like that and assumed it was cool with everybody else. Shonisaurus is another one. A giant reptile that kind of looks like a dolphin, except it was somewhere between 45 and 70 feet long. Imagine how little effort it would take for it to turn you into paste. Now imagine something that could turn several Shonasaurus into paste. To find a creature like this, we must visit Nevada, international capital of gambling addiction and home of the beaver's wet dream. Paleontologists discovered several partial remains of Shonasaurus. The weird part was that they were kind of arranged on some John Doe type shit. This kind of freaked out some of the scientists, which is understandable I suppose and one hero of the paleontology community claimed that this wasn't mere chance, this was by design. Some creature that was very smart, very strong, and very large killed these Shonasaurus and played with their fucking corpses. With this, the Triassic Kraken was born. A 100 foot long prehistoric squid was accused of these murders. This paleontologist even claimed that he found a fossilized beak but reports are conflicting. Hey, you never know, we did just talk about how annoying fossilization can be, and cephalopods are extra difficult because they have basically no hard bits to fossilize. So yeah, well I think it's unlikely, there's no way to prove that it's not out there. Or nearby. Maybe behind you, it's behind you, it's behind you, it's run, 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 run. Number two, remote prehistoric viewings. Unless you've watched Jurassic Park approximately 426 times like me, you'll never get to see what it was actually like to live in the Mesozoic era. But a little branch of science called psychometry might just be the next best thing. Now, don't let a silly little label like pseudoscience or verifiably untrue fool you. Psychometry is the next breakthrough in paleontology and archaeology. Psychometry is the belief that objects like bones and rocks and shit had either an energy field or some sort of memory or soul that someone can kinda read when they touch it. Does this sound scientific? No. But back in the olden days, science was kinda whatever you wanted it to be. Many people used this as a means to study fossils in the late 1800s and described being able to actually look into the time of the dinosaurs. But that's okay, because now we've moved past that into an age of even further scientific enlightenment. Today we require evidence logic, and academic rigor in our experiments. Right? No, not really. Would you believe me if I told you that the United States government was doing this fucking malarkey as recently as 1984? If you wouldn't, then you have far too much trust in the government. The CIA declassified this document in 2000, which personally, I don't know, considering what's found inside, I'd be too embarrassed to ever let this one leave the deep fault under Area 51, but you do you, government. The following is a transcript of a man attempting to relay his perspective as he looks at prehistoric Mars, and I would like you to sit back, relax, and just bask in the fact that your parents' tax dollars may just have helped make this happen. Focus on 40.89 degrees north, 9.55 degrees west. <laughs> I don't know, bro. I see a fucking... I see a pyramid. Nah, it's good. Keep it pushing. Move in time. These clouds are crazy, man. Hold on. This is a problem. Wait, holy fuck. There are fucking people in here, bro. They're tall and they're really freaky. Move close to one of them and ask them to tell you about themselves. What? Looking for a way to survive and they can't. They're very philosophic about it, though. It's cool. They're okay with it. They're not mad about it. I don't really have a point for that one. 
That was just some wild shit. Those are just a few excerpts. If you'd like to read the entire thing, I'd highly recommend it because it was definitely an interesting read. But yeah, that exists. Number one, the mysterious Gressliosaurus. Amans Gressley was an esteemed geologist and paleontologist in the mid-1800s. He traveled across Europe from Iceland to the Jura Mountains, where the Jurassic period gets its name, fun fact, and practically invented paleoecology and biostratigraphy. He did a lot of cool shit that arguably laid the groundwork for many interesting discoveries in geology and paleontology, but it's all nerd yap, so just take my word for it, this guy was the shit. He even has not one, but two fucking dinosaurs named after him, Amanzia and Gressliosaurus. Gressley worked as the assistant to a man named Luis Agassiz, who was a real fucking asshole. Agassiz built one of his greatest works off the back of many fossils Gressley had discovered. Some sources even claim that he stole fossils from Gressley altogether. While he was in a mental institution, by the way, unfortunately, Gressley suffered from some mental issues, being sent to a mental institution twice, the second time being right at the end of his life. And this was around 1865, so that shit probably fucking sucked. Anyway, that big project Agassiz created didn't exactly do numbers at ye old science shop, so he accumulated a huge amount of debt, stole a few more of Gressley's fossils, and promptly fled the country. This fossil finding business gets serious, I've been telling you guys. In case you wanted another reason not to like this guy, I'll give you a freebie. He was a big influence on scientific racism. <laughs> yes, real thing. Basically, the idea that different races evolved from different apes, and differences in genes made some races objectively superior to others. By the way, not true. In case you weren't aware, we all came from the same monkeys. Possibly as a result of his mental issues, possibly as a result of this medieval fucking health care making it worse, Gressley started suffering from... How do I say this? Delusions? One of his colleagues who visited him while in the asylum wrote a book shortly after and mentions this in the fucking footnotes on a single page. Poor Gressley, who falling into insanity was agonized by the thought that he had transformed into this Gressliosaurus. What? And then he doesn't fucking elaborate. Not even a little. You can't drop on me the fact that this poor fucking man was sitting in a hospital that looked more like a dungeon than anything, and he thought he was becoming a dinosaur? Oh yeah, and then he died. And after that, someone realized the Gressliosaurus looked an awful lot like the Plateosaurus, so today it's no longer a valid species. But... The Swiss Paleontological Society did name an award after him, at least. So... And that wraps up 10 more of the greatest dinosaur theories of all time. I hope this fucked with your head as much as it did mine. If I just so happen to educate you, or turn you into a hardcore conspiracy theorist, please remember to pay the like and subscribe button a visit on your way out. It means the most. And that's about it for this time, guys. Have a good one, boys. Bye! Bye.